Hey, what's going on people? It's your boy Moose here. Welcome back to another video. Now I've been getting this question a whole lot and it is what are my settings and if I have any different settings from my past settings video to now. If you guys follow me on Twitch, you guys will know that I am actually always trying to tweak my settings because I still don't feel like I have the perfect fit, but this is what I use right now and have been using for a little while. And I have yet to perfect it, but you guys see a whole lot of videos of me uh, fragging out with it and you guys still ask for my settings. So without any further ado, here they are. So first thing is first, you're going to want to go down to your advanced look controls and turn it on if you haven't already, because I play on ALCs. My dead zone is down to 3%. Dead zone means just like how sensitive your analog sticks are to your movement and such like that on your left and your right. And your outer threshold is the one that basically it, it, the way that I can explain this is that it, it makes all the rest of these settings go a little bit faster and your response curve. I have it down to one. I have, the reason why I have it down to one and can't be fully linear is because of my stick drift. As you guys can see, if I drop all of these down to zero, you can see that I have some really nasty stick drift. So if you guys do have stick drift, make sure you have a bit of a higher dead zone. For me personally, I think that two or three is the sweet spot for me and a one response curve. And as you guys can see, there's like barely any movement at all. Obviously, if I force it and like move it one way, which I know I have stick drift in that way, I can force it to do stick drift. But for the most part, it's pretty solid. Now, moving on from the response curve, or actually, I guess I could touch base. If you guys are more of classic players, if you guys see this basic line right here that goes right in the middle, this is your classic response curve around a 10. As you can see, the slope down here gets a little bit gets a little bit steep and as you progress over to the left side it becomes more of a raw input feel the further you go up obviously you know you're gonna have actually i actually don't know what this one would be called because honestly i've never used it i've always been a linear player so that's why i have my stuff set to three two and one Let's move over to the per optic settings. So per optic settings, yes, I do use them. And I like my optic settings a little bit faster than most. As you guys can see, the default is down here at, I'm pretty sure it's at one. For my iron side optics, I have 1.4, two times 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, and the 10 times optic because I never use it. I just threw it up at 1.7 and I haven't touched it since. Now, obviously this is just based on the site that you are using, you know, if, if you have like a variable and you're on the one times, you're going to have the 1.4. If you're in the two times, you're going to have 1.6. I just feel like with a, you know, greater scope, you need a little bit higher of a sensitivity, at least for me. Moving on to the yaw speed and pitch speed. So this is basically how fast you turn left or right and up and down. I like to keep mine at 400. Now this extra yaw speed and the extra pitch speed, this is basically, this adds on to this. So 100 plus 400 is 500, 150 plus 400 is 550. So basically if I am, you know, jittering around, the best way I can describe it is, you know, if I go like this maximum input, you know, you see me moving fast, but if I'm just, you know, moving around like normally not given maximum input, this is what the 400, 400 looks like, you know, just regular. But if I'm putting in maximum input, you can see how much faster that is. Also just to backtrack, sorry, um, for the yaw speed, I, I was mentioning how, you know, it gives you that extra you know movement and when you're putting in maximum input but a little thing that it also does is you can see clearly as soon as you go into a target around the bubble if you are on controller obviously this is why you're watching this you can see that it just takes it away so when you are moving around it completely negates the extra yaw speed that you have and it goes back down to what you originally set on your yaw speed so as you can see this is this is my you know extra yaw speed at 150 I go in here and then I'm just back down in this range to 400. Okay, now coming back down to the ADS yaw speed and pitch speed. Okay, now this one is, it's super important to note that you guys need to understand that this is different for everybody. My thumbs and my recoil control is not the same as yours. So for example, especially with the pitch speed up and down, this is how well you control your recoil naturally. So if you need that extra help or to slow it down, you should be down around here where it's slower. 
as you can see i'm not used to it i'm not naturally like that i am up at around the 130 to 140 range because that's where i'm most comfortable at so obviously i'm a little bit faster and obviously way better at my natural recoil control sensitivity up and down so this one is super super important that you guys need to figure out on your own my settings are not going to help you in terms of the ads speed that comes down to you guys as a player my thumbs are different than yours everybody thumbs are different yes they can be similar obviously but not every single person has the exact same natural recoil control or movement down to control the recoil and again the extra yaw and pitch speed is basically the exact same as the extra yaw and pitch speed over here except the only difference is when you are aiming down so i get an extra 125 movement speed when i am ads that would put me up to about 260 for ads speed except when i get in that bubble of aim assist then it disappears so this is what it looks like when i have that extra yaw speed up at 125 regularly so i can snap onto targets but as soon as I get in that bubble, you guys can see that it slows down. That's like the best way that I can describe it. There's like this little bubble for aim assist that starts to click in when you are targeting people. And that's when you, you, bleh, that is when you lose your extra turning yaw speed and extra whatever. What is this thing called again? And your extra pitch speed. But yeah, these are, these are my entire settings. So three dead zone, two outer threshold one response curve you guys have already seen my per optics uh 400 400 150 100 137 137 125 and 79 that could honestly i probably made a mistake there should be up at 80 but it is what it is and these things uh you, you don't want ramp up time or ramp up delays that's just silly you do not want that so keep that stuff down low and if you're ambitious Turn off the aim assist for a little while. I've always been an advocate of that. You guys know I made a video on that previously. It's my number one video on my channel of me playing without aim assist. So if you guys want to go see those settings and you want to test those out for yourself, feel free. But yeah, these, these are uh, my settings and I really hope you guys enjoy and learned a little something and got some help from it. Look forward to hearing how these uh, settings have helped you guys. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Later.